Recently, I did a review on the Sooth 2 by OX Sound, and it's an absolutely amazing plugin that made it into my go to plugins list. Now, today we have another OX Sound plugin review, and this one is on a plugin called Spiff. So to switch things up a bit from the typical review style videos that I do here on the channel, I'm going to be doing sort of a blind review of this plugin. I've not pulled it up on anything yet. This will be the first time that I'm actually looking at the plugin and getting to use it and utilize it on something within a mix. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the actual website itself and see what exactly it is that they're boasting about this plugin. What can it do? What are they saying that it can do and cannot do? And we'll just kind of dive in from there. So it says it's a transient control OIC style. One of the first things I'm drawn to here is it says it's been designed to cut or boost transients with extreme detail. Similar to Soothe, it says Spiff analyzes the incoming signal and applies the processing only to the parts of the signal that contain the transient information. This keeps the rest of the signal intact and free from side effects. Now, if it actually does what it says it's going to do here, this could be really cool. One of the first things I'm already thinking about is the picking on an acoustic guitar. Um, let's go ahead and read the rest of this and see if that's actually something that they talk about. All right, so here's another cool point. It says, by reacting only where and when needed, Spiff is capable of attenuating or even removing transient information from a sound, effective on mouth noises, hard consonants, clicks and pops, and it can also be used to soften the pick attack from a guitar recording while retaining the top end and sheen. That would be amazing. Let's, uh, let's dive into that and see. I find it ironic, too, that one of my first thoughts about how to use this plugin is actually contained within the copy here on the page. So let's just go ahead and actually see if this thing stacks up to what it actually says it can do. Okay, so I have before us now four acoustic guitar tracks. Uh, essentially, it's only two acoustic guitar tracks that have been double tracked. The other two channels are actually just parallel compression channels that I've added back into it. I think if I add the parallel compression into the chain as well, though, it's going to really push this plug into its limits and see if it can actually do what it's it's saying it's going to do. Okay, so I've got all of these routed now to the acoustic guitars bus, and I've got the instance of Spiff loaded already. Let's go ahead and take a listen uh, before we initiate the Spiff plugin. Let's see exactly what we're listening to. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's a very well-recorded acoustic guitar track. However, uh, the pick on that is just a little bit too uh, tacky. And in the reference to the rest of the mix, it's probably going to end up dominating the mix. And uh, if that's something stylistically the artist was going for, that's one thing. But in this case, I'm wanting to be able to tame that a little bit. And uh, let's just see if Spiff can actually stack up to what it says it can do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to find out what exactly is that frequency? What range do I need to look for and hunt for? So the best thing that I can do then is I'll go to this high band here, this this uh, purple band, and I'll click listen. And this will allow me to only listen to that band. And I can actually see if that's an area that I need to affect or not. Now you'll notice that I don't hear anything until I initiate the depth knob. So I have to actually initiate this first. That definitely sounds like an area that is where it's at. So I'm going to take this listen off. Okay, I'm going to turn that decay down a little bit because those clicks and the, and the pops off of that pick don't last too long. Okay, so this is the mix knob at zero, which means nothing is happening. Okay, now I'm going to slowly blend it back in to 100% mix. So we're going to start at zero, and I'm going to blend it to 100 so you can hear the difference.
Okay, so I am noticing that there's some top end actually missing there, and it might just be where I have this uh, located. So let me kind of hunt and peck and move that around and see if I can't get that actually to sound better. Okay, that actually sounds like it's it's still retaining some of that high end. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it and bypass it as it's playing here so we can hear the difference before and after. So this is before. Wow. So if you're listening through a set of headphones, I hope you were able to hear this. Uh, the difference is night and day to me personally. I'm still able to retain some of the pick noise that I wanted. Um, it looks like I could honestly remove all of it if I wanted to, but it, it's also going to degradate the high end a little bit more than what I would want. Um, but at the same time, it looks like I'm able to get rid of the, the harsh sound that's coming from that pick that's overtaking uh, the guitar itself and, and allows it to just sound a lot more natural. I can definitely see where this would be a great addition to someone's arsenal. Okay, so now let's check this out on some drums. Uh, this is definitely one of those areas where the plugin is supposed to shine the most according to the website. Let's go ahead and take a listen first without the plugin enabled. Okay, so we're going to bring out a little bit of some more punchiness in that snare drum is what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a preset here. Nice. Okay, so this is nothing happening. Slowly blend this in. So it kind of brings back some of that woody tone that's lost in translation there. Um, but it's notable to mention too that this is on the entire drum kit. This is on the drum bus. This might be something that would be better on the actual snare piece itself. So let's go to that. Here we go. And let's go back to our preset. Snare add body.
Okay, so there's the uh, the crack of that snare I'm wanting to accentuate. Ooh. Nice. Ooh, nice. Okay, so uh, this is before. And after. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, in this case, it's a little more subtle, but man, it sounds really, really good. So it looks like there's also a preset here for the toms. I want to go ahead and play with that. And it's crazy how close you can get just by choosing one of these presets. Nice. Man alive. All right, because that preset sounded so good, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that same preset to the next Tom. And I'll go ahead and copy this over here and now I want to go to Tom 3 of course this is a bigger Tom so I'm going to use the preset Tom large and I'm just going to trust it copy and paste it and let's see how all these sound now whoa whoa All right, so here's a quick before and after of the Spiff plugin on the toms. Let's go ahead and give that a listen. This is before. Okay, and this is after. Wow, it's very subtle, but man, those toms just come alive. All right, let's go ahead and listen to this in context with the full drum kit itself. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right, so now let's listen in context with the mix. What exactly Spiff has added to or taken away? You be the judge as to whether you like the sound or not. So this is before the Spiff plugin was actually added. Let's take a listen. Now here's that same snippet of music with the Spiff plugin actually enabled.
Nice. Okay, so immediately what I noticed after enabling the Spiff plugin was that the transients of the acoustic guitar picking didn't seem to interfere then with the transients from the snare. Uh, also, it seemed as if it just allowed the acoustic guitar itself to court, sort of be tamed just a little more, uh, as well as allow the toms and the snare track to sort of be raised up into uh, the spotlight a little more, which in my personal opinion, allow the balance of the track itself as a whole to actually come into a better picture. So upon first look, just completely out of the gate, just messing around with this plugin just to see if it's actually worth what it says it's worth. I have to say it's definitely right up there. It's, it's going to end up being on my next top 15 go-to plugins that I reach for every single mix. Uh, this is just awesome. Well, kudos to you, OX Sound, for making another awesome plugin. I'm definitely going to be including the Spiff on my next 15 go-to plugins I reach for for every mix. Uh, this is definitely another one that I have to say right out of the gate, it's awesome. Now, for those of you that frequent this channel, you know that I don't really push plugins off on people. In fact, I don't really talk about plugins much at all. And most of my live mixing sessions and things like that, I actually use stock plugins because it's what everyone has. It's readily accessible. And for the most part, most plugins all do the same thing. However, what OX Sound is doing with the Sooth 2 plugin and with the Spiff plugin is they're doing something that not every plugin can do. So this is a rare instance where I'll actually be talking about and promoting a plugin to my audience simply because it can do something that other plugins cannot do. All right, so if you'd like to learn more about OX Sound and the plugins that they provide, I'll be including a link in the description of this video where you can go and check them out. Now, you're going to find there on their page all of the documentation that you're going to need to study up on these plugins before you ever purchase them, as well as some great tutorial videos that they've made themselves that will kind of lead you through some of the basics of these plugins. Now, today, this wasn't the typical in-depth review that I do on a plugin, but I wanted to do something a little bit different today and sort of just grab a plugin and start playing with it and let you see what you can do with a fresh plugin. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this video insightful, educational, or entertaining at the least. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon because every time I go live or a new tutorial is dropped, you'll be the first to know. Until next time, remember we can dream alone, we can create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.